before we begin this video, please subscribe right now and click the notification bell to get news on Asante Tech Protocol. Okay, let's go into the game. Now, uh, tomorrow is a must-win game. A draw, a 0-0 draw will be very, very, very bad. And a 1-1 draw again will be very, very bad. So, tomorrow is a must-win game and we'll be looking to seal our first win of the season tomorrow. So, what are your thoughts um, ahead of the game? Well, uh, any form of a draw apart from 0-0 is going to be really, really tough for us because as you already know, Ghanaians are really bad when it comes to taking penalties. So, um, one would not hope <laughs> one would not hope for 1-1 one, one again because it's not going to be in our favour this time. But I hope, or fingers are crossed, that we're going to win this match tomorrow because um, it, should, it should be, I mean, um, we, we've played, we've played almost um three games in the season right now and it's yeah. been the draw which we've been labeled as the draw masters i i don't think any kotako fan is happy uh, happy about that so um i think tomorrow master Pnedu has uh, another opportunity to um to show his prowess what, what he can do you know we, we need to win this match um in my opinion one or two nil i'm, I'm, I'm not gonna be um, satisfied with it. it it should be a convincing win at least three nil three one for one, something like that, for 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 it to put a little bit of fear in the opponents that we're gonna face. Mind you, we play Al, Al Hilal, who has yes. been a thorn in the flesh uh, for us of late. I quite remember the last game. Uh, through that game, CK got sacked uh, in Kumasi, and uh, yes. through that offside goal that Yakubo scored, um, we, we would have we would have lost that match. They, they are very good side uh, when it comes to uh, African competition. All right, so you watched the first game and now tomorrow we are going to play again. Do you think Master Kornado will maintain the same lineup? Well, I think he will maintain the same lineup with the exception of one player. Who? I think Habib will come in for Mubarak Yusuf. Okay. Yeah, because uh, Habib, Habib was really solid when we played against uh, Brekum, uh, Brekum Arsenal. Uh, Chelsea, sorry. Brekum Chelsea, yeah. Brekum Chelsea. So uh, I think he is going to help us a lot. And um, even though Yusuf was kind of okay, but he's still struggling. You can see he's still struggling and playing for us. If you can remember, I raised that issue about his defending. And I, just like you said, I watched the game again. And um, I was watching it again when you called, you know, uh, because I wanted to know the, ta the tactical point of view that Masuk went in the game with. Um, you could see we were clearly lining up with a 4-4-2. But okay. I clearly have some issues and concerns, you know, about the tactics that we deployed. If they were clinical, they had two good opportunities, which, in my opinion, they should have scored. Nevertheless, we also have some brilliant chances as well. Ivan Sadomako having a chance, Sule Muniru, when he was alert, he could have scored that goal. And Kwame Poku, who was also being a bit rushy, when the game was getting to the end. But um, I we, we, I expect only one change to the side. So the normal lineup with um, Kwame Bai in post, not, not Felix because you know Felix is injured. Yes, with uh, yes. Moro taking his place. Moro was also good uh, during the match. But one player that I was really impressed with was um, Godfrey Desiama. Yes, he, he, I think he was the one that assisted the goal. Yes, yes, yes. And that was a nice shot from Osman. Um, yeah, I, I'm expecting at least only one change. And as we uh, we made mention of, Godfrey Desiama was really, really exciting to watch. And I hope he does a lot more because sometimes he can, you know, go off within the game and uh, with one or two actions, he becomes a little bit lively again. But we should expect more. But Fabio Gama also travelled with the squad and I don't know whether they're going to include him. Or we're gonna he might play. Him. He might yeah? play. He must play here. Yeah. I trust your sources. So, um, <laughs> so okay. My question is, if Gamma is gonna play, where do you think we'll see Gamma in the team? Oh, I think since he's small, I think he can maneuver to so advanced position, probably uh, behind the strikers. Okay. Because All right, uh, Oben, Oben Sylvester is prison from Libya. Thanks for joining oh, us, Oben. That's, that's nice. That's nice. That's yeah, nice. Uh, I think Gamma will play. Um, what do you call it? Behind, I think he's since because of his size yeah. and he's not physical. He should be playing advanced position 
not in a situ- uh, in a position that whenever he loses the ball or he loses the ball, it's going to be very difficult to recover. Do you understand? Okay. So if he plays deep and you collect the ball from him, it will be difficult for him to recover. So okay. I think Fabio Gap will be suited up front. I think he should be the playmaker since we don't have any. Yeah, true. Um, to add with, um, I learned um, we are also in talks, but yeah, I don't believe the source is though, but one player that we should really look out for is their captain. That guy is just good. Oh, okay. Yes, definitely. That definitely. guy is just good. Their captain. Oh, me, yes, when... me, me personally, I'm not scared of their team. I watched the team. I watched it very well. I'm not scared of the team. I can sense that Kotoko, the players are under pressure, but um, it's normal to get like to, to be pressurized when you play outside the country. I think when they come here, everything will be okay and we'll be able to contain them. That's one day I'm not scared. I'm not, but really? we are not. Yes, I'm not scared. You of... remember our chat? I told you, I told you that they, they are good because some of the clips and the matches that I watched about them, uh, they were not bad at him. You know, they could possess the ball really well. and. You could see that they have some tactical um, philosophy when they are play, when they are on the ball and when they yeah. are without the ball as well. But I think we had an advantage because they had just changed their coach. Yeah, we, we, I think uh, tomorrow game is going to be different because I think we are more like comfortable playing on the natural pitch. They are more comfortable playing on um, astral turf. So. Yeah. It's going to affect the game and they're going to struggle. To be I think honest, their astral turf wasn't the best. The players took wasn't the, the best. Ball. So I think, and you see they were comfortable. They were comfortable with it. But we were not yeah. comfortable. So I think okay. uh, to, to, tomorrow is going to be, the pitch is going to be an advantage to us. I'll be going there very early, so I'm going to... Exactly, you have to, you have to because one thing that might play a major role is also the nature of our pitch. Because... Um, it's also difficult to control the ball on the Accra Sports Stadium. I don't know whether you have noticed that of late. Uh, no, nah, I don't. I don't think it's the pitch. I think it's the style of play because Ghanaians, um, Ghana, Ghana Premier League, our our, our ball control. I, I don't think I've seen a team since I've been to Ghana. I don't see it. I don't, I've not seen a Ghana Premier League team that can hold the ball for like more than ten minutes to keep oh, that capacity. Really? I have followed it all my life, and I would recommend you watch the Kotoko team of 2008, the one that was coached by Basu Redufo. That is the best team that I've watched for the past 15 years. Alright, I'm definitely going to check on YouTube. You have to check it. That team killed Dolphins. Your, your... <laughs> that... <laughs> that team okay. killed Dolphins with a four but, goals. Uh, you watched the, the you said it was the highlight. Did you see most of the time um Kwame Koko is isolated up uh up exactly. front? Yeah. So how do you think that can change? What do you think they have, they have to do to change something like that? Exactly. Thanks for the question. The problem with our system is that whenever we are pressing or whenever we are going forward, the defenders tend to stay a little bit back. So it creates a lot of space between the defenders and the midfielders. And the okay. midfielders tend also not to press behind the, uh, the striker. So it also creates a lot of space. So that's the reason why we, we, we always see Kwame Poku uh, to be isolated mo- most of the game. Because when you are pressing, you need to press as a team. Whenever Kwame Poku presses, that means Christopher Neto has to support. The goalkeeper also has to support by coming forward a little bit, acting as a sweeper. You know, so I think that is that that is the thing that I've not seen about Ghanaian teams and especially about Kotoko because if you have any tactical coach, he could easily utilize the spaces that we create between the striker and the spaces that we create between our defenders and the midfielders. It's something of an issue that we have to take a look at. All right, all right, all right. I hear you. Now, um, what's his name? Um, Yusuf Mubarak and and uh, Abdul Ghaniyo. If you watch, they continued what they did against Eleven Wonders. It's the 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 work of the defenders most times is just to collect the ball and pass to the midfielders and the midfielder creatures. But you see them continuing their long balls. What yeah. is going on that uh, our midfielders are not the ones giving these long balls? What is like? What do you think is the problem? What is because of this? 
I think it's to do with the coach because Marcel Pinedo is known to uh, to be a coach who is fan of the long ball tactics. He always deploys the long ball, and uh, I think if you don't have quick players, if you don't have players with uh, end products, or if you don't have quick strikers, is I mean, it's always gonna you always gonna end up you know uh, getting the ball back to you as a defender, and uh, most of their passes are also not accurate. Either it goes to it goes wayward, either um, the the, def- the opposition defender flex it back so that they return it back again. So, you know, uh, it's something that he also uh, has to take a look at because um, Ganeyu is good on the ball though, but most of their passes go wayward. And um, one thing I have witnessed with our uh, midfield is that Kayeke tends to stay a lot longer on the ball. As yes. a midfielder, it's not your duty to stay that longer on the ball and if you can see that's the same problem with Pogba whenever he gets the ball he wants to dribble uh, do something for the supporters to see hey I am Emmanuel Keeke you know and uh, sometimes it's just releasing it once yeah um, I you... like the way this guy plays uh, I don't think Paul. he's been playing good of late but one thing about him is that he tends to lose his cool really quickly because most of the times he wants to ballot the ball once sometimes you can just True. control the ball and then give a normal pass. When we went to Nuadibo, you could see that they didn't make use of Christopher Nete. He is yeah, one I'll, of our weapons. I think I think that was that was the question I was getting to. I, I wanted to ask you, what do you think is wrong with our wing bats, like our full bats? Let's you know. Last season, we used, made use of Amo Ibrahim in attack in attacking play. He runs and crosses the ball. Sometimes creates creates chance for the striker and other players. Christovanetti Vanetti the same thing. But this season they hardly go forward and they hardly create chance in the attacking role. What is what do you think is the problem? I think the problem is actually to do with the tactics again because sometimes you could see the coach trying to deploy a three back system. You know, even with Godfrey Siama, when we are when we, we are without the ball, when we are with the ball, instead of him to come inside to create space for Imoru, Godfrey will still be occupying the wing. Uh, the uh, wings, you know, yes, yes. which creates no room for Imoru to run into. You get what I mean? So, um, I think the coach needs to talk to the players because whenever you are with the ball, your left side winger or your right side winger needs to come in to create space for the overlapping uh, um, overlapping lateral defender. If he fails to do that, it's going to be difficult. Uh, one thing I've noticed about um, Christopher Nete is that even though Jeffrey does not come inside a lot. He also tends to stay wider, you know, uh, uh, close to the to the uh, to the uh, the throw area. But Christopher Nete has this ability of dribbling inside. He can also make the inverted runs. He cannot. He does not only make the overlapping, but he also makes some uh, inverted runs. If you can really recall our goal against Brighton Arsenal, he made that inverted run and passed the ball. Which the defender failed to clear. Yeah, Brickham Chelsea, sorry. Which resulted in uh, in our first goal, you know. So, um, now they yes, have that. But, um, Moro, I'm still yet to see his overlapping. Even though last season he was a bit lively. But um, I think I've seen less, less from him this season. Maybe uh, the coach deployed that tactics because we, are, we were playing away. All right. Um, so, so let's let's round up. Um, I think I have two more questions. The first question is: We are, we are not supposed to lose this game. Do you think Jose uh, Conedo's future will be in doubt if he loses this game? For sure, for sure. Because um, if um, I've been doing some rounds on social media, even though football is not played on social media, but some of the fans are not that impressed with the kind of outings that our team have been churning out. Um, that started from last evening. Uh, if you can recall, our match against Elmina Sharks, we were totally dem- dominated by Elmina Sharks. Elmina Sharks should have won that game if it wasn't Kwame Ban, because they had a lot of several um, chances which they squandered. But um, I think he would need to set up because what I gather from the training grounds is that here yeah, the players are working tactically. They are doing that, they are doing that. But when it comes to the match, I mean, you fail to see anything of that sort within the game. It's either we are, we are just running um, after the ball 
valuing the ball, you know, away. You, you see no tactics, even though. But tomorrow is a chance for him to silence people like us because I'm a, I'm his critic. True. I'm, I'm here yes, to be too. with the second coming, though. So um, he needs to sit up or, um, yeah, somebody is just uh, <laughs> behind the door because, uh, yeah, with this kind of materials, right. I expect the team to perform really well and excite the fans. Okay, uh, let's round up. What are your predictions? What do you think, like the natural or the realistic scoreline tomorrow? Because some people, people are watching this thing, including me, are considering betting on that game, and some people are not oh. giving me a for street <laughs> win. <laughs> well, so what um, do you think? Like, what, be be what, what prediction? It's not gonna be an easy game, but from my protocol point of view, from my feeling, I would have loved a 3-0. But you would ask yourself, does this protocol team have the capabilities and ability to score a 3-0 without conceding? Without conceding. That's <laughs> because we almost we always tend to sit back when we score. We invite pressure on ourselves, you know, and uh, we are not that good when we are playing on the counter. So um I'm going for a slim win, maybe a 2-1. A 2-1 or a 3-1, maybe. Maybe a 2-1 or a 3-1. A 2-1 or a 3-1. That is what I would be going for. All right. Me, personally, I think Kotoko will win this game by uh, two goals to one with us coming two first. I think it's either okay. because it's difficult because I think Kotoko, the way uh, Max Ekonado won this game, he wants us to score the first goal and after scoring the first goal score the second one then we go, go back and defend but i think yeah. they might score one goal. but definitely i'm 90 percent sure that there's going to be another penalty tomorrow yeah we, we are we are gonna have a penalty tomorrow that that's for sure because <laughs> they had one against us during the uh the uh the first leg so uh, it's our time to have ours as well so uh um, I think tomorrow a two one or a three one. Uh, that that that's that's my feeling. Yeah, you know, African officiating is very very predictable. Really really bad, really really bad, and really poor as well. All right, I think I think that's all for today. Um, okay, so that I'll post the um, preview before um, eight pm or seven pm today. So thank thanks for joining me. I think we are, we are going to talk again. After so before game. before we will uh, end this, um, I would urge all, all all the viewers to always go to Daily Porcupine for the uh, for the protocol related news. Yes, and, I'm uh, also <laughs> for the protocol related news, and for sure we will do player ratings after the match. Sure, so, uh, definitely. They should come there and uh, also have their comments because at the end of the day, it's for the fans, you know. Uh, we are doing it for the fans. So, uh, thanks for having me on and uh, hope that we win tomorrow. <laughs> Speak to you tomorrow. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. All right. That was Vincent. He joined us for the preview of the game. Tomorrow, Kotoko will be playing the FC at the Accra Sports Stadium. And he predicted 2-1 or 3-1. Me, I'm predicting 2-1. So, if you are betting, you know what to do. Um, I think that's all for today.